The Meaning of Marxism by Paul D'Amato Section Abundance and the End of Inequality Notwithstanding the sordid avarice and selfish plunder of class society, human productivity has advanced. As Marx and Engels so brilliantly summarized in the manifesto, the rise of capitalism has created a world market where each part of the world is dependent on the other. It has concentrated populations in large cities, subordinating the country to the town. And it has, by the development of centralized and expanded machine-based mass production, created productive forces that far surpass all previous societies. The bourgeoisie, quote, cannot exist without constantly revolutionizing the instruments of production and thereby the relations of production, and with them the whole relations of society. Abundance is the first material premise that makes socialism more than just a utopian dream, and makes its achievement actually really possible. As Engels explained, quote, it is precisely this industrial revolution which has raised the productive power of human labor to such a high level that for the first time in the history of humanity, the possibility exists, given a rational division of labor among all, to produce not only enough for the plentiful consumption of all members of society and for an abundant reserve fund, but also to leave each individual sufficient leisure so that what is really worth preserving in historically inherited culture, science, art, human relations, is not only preserved, but converted from a monopoly of the ruling class into the common property of the whole of society, and further developed. End quote. The decisive point for Engels is that this abundance has removed every excuse for the existence of a handful of exploiters, or for any kind of privation. Indeed, the existence of a ruling class has now long been a positive hindrance on the human development. Organized rationally, modern technology would lessen the burden of toil and free up the majority to participate fully in the running of society by limiting the labor time of each individual member to such an extent that all have enough free time left to take part in the general, both theoretical and practical, affairs of society. End of chapter 3